Fremantle Prison is well known for being haunted. Okay, I've got something weird happening out here that is concerning me. Can you get out here? The prisoner had jumped from the highest landing of First Division down to ground and died. Why? Jump. And they see strange uh, apparitions in various parts of the prison. I swear in the corner of my eyes I saw like someone standing. I thought I heard voices then. Did you see that light go off? Hmm, blue light? You saw the poison. There's a really weird noise coming from my camera. It's like the bell was tolling for us. <laughs> Hi Crypt Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jared and I are taking on, we are investigating the Fremantle Prison. This is one of the most haunted places in Perth, one of the most haunted places in Western Australia, and I guess Australia as well. I've been dying to investigate this place for many years. Very excited it's happening tonight, so stay tuned. The Fremantle Prison is a foreboding place with a long and dark history. It has seen imprisonment, punishment and repentance, and even the scene of multiple escapes and executions. From uh, 1850 to 1868, it was the last place in Australia to receive convicts. Convicts were brought here to West Australia, trained here in Fremantle. They built their own prison, they built part of Fremantle, and then sent all over West Australia to build and to populate. Uh, then the gold rush happened and from 1886 to 1991 it was West Australia's major civilian prison. The British gave it to the West Australian government. It was so huge, didn't build any other prisons until the 1960s. We had every type of prisoner here from a person serving a week for not paying a parking fine to lifers and murderers. Fremantle Prison is well known for being haunted. One of the reasons is we're on top of a hill to receive the healthy sea breezes but even during the daytime it's an old building Everything rattles and moans and shuts, but especially at night, in the night tours, uh, people have felt strange occurrences when they go to certain areas like the gallows and solitary. They see orbs when they take photographs and films, and they see strange uh, apparitions in various parts of the prison. Being known as one of the most haunted places in Australia, we couldn't resist visiting the old jail to spend a night for ourselves locked within its walls, hoping to see if we could document any signs of paranormal activity. Guys, it's pretty dark inside, so we're gonna start our walkthrough right now but before we go inside the actual main cell block here there is something that I want to show you guys so just behind me up here this is the chapel for the uh, the convicts the prisoners here and there is a very famous sort of ghostly story to go with it we have many repeat visitors to Fremantle prison and many Visitors ask about the face in the window. When you come into the main gate, you see the huge chapel, but one of the windows comes from the 1850s and some people can see a face. And many people feel that it looks like a woman called Martha Rendell. We had 157 legal executions in West Australia. Only three of them were women, and only one of them was executed here in Fremantle Prison, and that was Martha Rendell. And in 1909, she was tried and convicted of poisoning three of her stepchildren using hydrochloric acid. But she always maintained her innocence, and there have been books written about here in West Australia. And uh, we had an ex-female guide who talked to us guides and said that when she was working there in the 1950s and 60s, all the female prisoners knew the story because they feel that she still walks the corridors at night. And many people believe and speculate her face has actually been imprinted on the window that's just behind me of this chapel. And it's eerie because it's almost a side profile of her. So I can show a couple of images of, you know, the window where a lot of people say that they see Martha. Also, another thing, we got the keys to the prison, sort of. <laughs> I bought these at the gift shop, so they probably aren't the actual keys, but I figured it'd be a cool trigger object for tonight. Let's go inside. All right, guys, we've just made it inside the main cell block. This place is huge. We have a lot of work to do tonight. It's also a World Heritage listed site, so yeah, you'll see what I mean as we walk through just this one cell block. It is four stories tall. And 
we're only at one end of it right now. We're currently in division one. Uh, it's got four different divisions in here and each one sort of goes up to, you know, division one being, I guess, softer, more petty crimes, division four being lifers or murderers. So we we'll walk our way sort of up a division as we go, but I do want to go upstairs. Now we did talk to Matthew, a guide earlier today, and he told me a very eerie ghost story about this division. So I want to walk up a bit closer to where, you know, the ghost here was sighted. I have my own personal experience. I was just starting, it was 2006, and uh, I was a, a place called Solitary Confinement, and it was a, a night function, and uh, people were allowed to wander around. We had a lot of security uh, station, but a middle-aged woman came rushing into the area, and she'd been in a place called First Division. This uh, place has four landings, and she was on the ground level. She'd looked up and seen a person bathe in the blue light, mouth wide opening, seeming to scream, because nothing was coming out, but she felt that inside her mind, he was saying, I'm gonna jump and kill myself. And she was crying so much, she was making me cry. And I said, uh, where were you? And she said, I was in First Division. And uh, have you? I asked her if you had heard the story about First Division. She hadn't. We tell all our visitors that in uh, 1900, a prisoner had jumped from the highest landing of First Division down to ground and died. And I said, you had probably seen the ghost of the person who committed suicide in 1900. Strange to say, that didn't comfort her. She just cried even more. So my name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared. We call out to the prisoners or the ex-guards of the Fremantle prison. If there's anyone around tonight, don't be shy to make your presence known to us. You can start right now. Come up towards my hands, please. Wait, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I guess we can just say that we've given them all permission to come out tonight. Yeah, if you can come and get these keys from me, you can get out. <laughs> okay. Now often we pick up things like metal bars with this, but no, okay. There's like something right in front of you, Jared. <laughs> right here? Yeah. What? I don't know. Has it gone now? Maybe, yeah. We just... Oh, maybe it's this. Okay. That. That's funny that that triggers it and that doesn't. Yeah, these look like they're the same. Anyway, we're pretty much right near the top, just above my head here. That is where the apparition was sighted, which could have been the person who decided to take their own life here, so. Um, um. Just as I said, I reckon. Can you come down here onto this level? We're losing light, the sun's going down, things are cooling off here. I don't know if that's the building expanding, but just the fact that it all happened sort of as I was talking about the spirit up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a bit coincidental. We're not actually going to go up there tonight, guys, because it's a restricted area. But that was cool. And I think this mic should have picked that up too. It was quite loud. I'm feeling good about tonight. Like I feel a little bit on edge in here, which I think is good because I'm feeling like we're going to capture a lot of stuff. Come on out and get the keys. This is how you get your freedom. Oh. I just want to point out one of the tour guides today, Matthew, was telling us that these sometimes spin on their own. So it'd be cool if we hear that sound tonight. He actually said it was just spinning like this. 
like around like all the way around and just kept kind of going and going so creepy if we see or hear that tonight come get the keys you can leave can i just say that probably has to be my favorite trigger object now these yeah that looks so cool so good. <laughs> we're gonna take them to all the prisons we go to we actually bought extra keys because we were really trying to replicate the actual sort of guard keys here Okay guys, so we are on the top level, the fourth story, and we're not even halfway down through the cells, right? Yeah, this is probably the longest prison wing we've ever been in. I reckon this is, the, this is for sure the biggest prison we've ever filmed, Jared. What is cool about this place as well, they do torchlight tours, so you can come through here in the dark on a guided tour love that and they tell you a lot of you know the dark history and the ghost stories and you get to experience this place as the sun's going down or when it's dark and i tell you what we came through earlier today i can already feel the difference <laughs> Here's what I want to show you. This guy's up here. This is the prison church. And this was kind of to inspire. John. No thanks. What did it say? Jump. That is um, very eerie considering the story that um, we heard earlier about Division One. And we are on the fourth story right now. Uh, 1900, a prisoner had jumped from the highest landing of First Division down to ground and died. If there's somebody around me, can we please have a name? response did you jump do you want us to jump this chapel though was designed to inspire the prisoners to kind of repent their sins so it's a different contrast this is very open and inviting there's no bars on the window in here only place in the prison with no bars on the windows versus this side which is the cell block. And then on the other side of the cell block is the punishment yard where they used to flog the prisoners. So while we're up here as well, this window here is where Martha's face is seen. It's the second one across. You can't really see it from this side though. It's only from the outside that people have, you know, seen her face, her silhouette. And maybe that's significant as if she's, you know, gazing out, wanting to leave, you know what Trapped I mean? Trapped, trying to get out or something like that. Yeah. Did you hear that? I didn't hear that one. I don't know if it's behind you, so maybe... Behind me? Yeah, like a little scratchy noise. Is there something... Tired. Maybe this is like their bedtime. You know, a lot of the prisoners here were doing hard, hard work during the day, Lab laborious work. So this is where they would go to um, rest in between their work times, right? This is fourth division. This is where they put murderers, people serving life sentences. Can you make a noise like this for us?
thought I heard voices in. Somebody down here? Can you say something really loud so we can hear you? I definitely heard voices, right? Hmm. Don't know if this picked we're, it up. We're fully alone in here. Um, there is security on site, but you know, they're not with us. I don't know that, you know, you could hear people outside of the prison walls because this place is huge, like, and the surrounding fence is like far from this actual cell block. It's designed. Under. All right, let's go under. <laughs> it's designed to keep people in, right? So. Hey, Ames. I just want to say the morgue is directly below this block. It is. Unfortunately, we can't get down into the morgue because they're doing uh, some restorative work down there. But I've heard that's quite a haunted place down in the morgue. I'm just going to go under where I was standing. What's that? This is the entrance to um, the Catholic Church. So I'm assuming that's where some sort of Catholic relic goes. Right here. Maybe a candle or something? Is, or? This, is this where you wanted us to go? Does that say something up here? On this side. Film. Wall, we, wall or wall, wall, W-A-L. We are f making a film. If you want to be on that film, if you want to star on this film, don't be shy tonight. Blue light? Yeah. It's a sensor light. There's, There's a movie playing. Does that go off by sensor or? Yeah. Maybe it was coming off the screen. Possibly. But this is playing on its own. I wonder if that's normally on. So this place closed in 1991 and I believe this could be footage of that time or around that time. That's weird. I'm going to have to check. Why is it playing in slow-mo? Could that have been maybe the voices we heard before? Good call. It could have been, yeah. But they didn't sound all like... Bruh, bruh, you know no. I mean? Sort of sounds like Ghosted Vox. Yeah. <gasps> that is weird. Nice mullets though, damn. Okay guys, so we're going to give you a peek inside the cell right here. Um, just to show you how big it is. These cells, I believe, they've sort of been knocked out. So the cells used to be half of the size of what we're about to show you inside this one, A25.
guys the Fremantle prison is so huge and I know we were getting really good responses in the main cell block we will be back in there tonight and we'll be doing some solo investigations sort of like splitting up but there's other areas that I really really wanted to cover this being one of them so we're going to do an extra long walkthrough and go through uh, this area right now this is the solitary confinement cells it was also where prisoners who were on death row were kept uh, particularly you know in their final days a lot of people do find very strange occurrences occur in solitary confinements which is behind the gallows which from 1888 to 1907 also served as death row then moved to another part of the prison and the gallows. Usually they find it when on uh, night tours, they find it in their phones. They see strange uh, pulsating lights. They see uh, intense lights, which we known as orbs. This place looks really cool. <laughs> this one gives me chills. I'm gonna leave these here. Yeah, because there's a jingle around. Now, if there is anyone here and you want to let us know that you're here, just walk up to these keys, give them a little jingle. That would be so cool if we hear that. <laughs> now, my name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared. We come in great respect and we are just here to say hello and to talk to anyone who might still be here. If you have a message that you want to get across, feel free to come up to us and say it very loud. We can come towards the lights in my hand here. So I want to send Jared into this cell. Uh, just oh. to show you. <laughs> Not like nothing bad. I just want to show people kind of what it looks like, what it sounds like in there. So get in All there. Right. Actually. Oh, wow. It's very white in here. Whiter than I thought it would be. So double cell doors here very loud sound in here so they really really the aim was to get the uh, people in these cells to remain quiet because this would get to you this echo after a while and um, isolate them right make them feel alone and to sort of reflect on what they had done i guess soldier soldier yeah i feel like the echo in here would drive me nuts like yeah. We hum and sing to yourself a lot, so... Yeah. Hey, can I just point out to everyone, um, this first door Amy hung the keys, cell number one. If I'm not mistaken, our tour guide today said that this is the cell you would be in um, on the day... Of your execution, mm. yeah. So, so that, I guess, was the final holding cell for anyone who was hanged here at the Fremantle Prison. Unfortunately, we doesn't look like we can go in that one because it's locked off but no but i say we just go for a walk down to the end and see if we get any more words through and then uh we can call out with an estus yeah yeah so if there's anyone here tonight we're not here to hurt you you can just let us know make a noise give us a word move one of the doors touch those keys What's your lucky number? Seven. Can we get in cell seven? Is there a cell seven? Right here, but no, that yeah, one's locked. Unlucky. Right, how about uh, 10 then? Oh, okay, <laughs> all of a sudden your lucky number's 10. Well, <laughs> it's, it's opposite to seven, so yeah, I feel like- okay, that works. I feel like that's the closest one. So what we're gonna do is maybe you set up in there, I'll stay out here and we'll do an Estes. At this point in the night, Jared and I decided to try and reach out to the spirits of solitary confinement and death row. But we also wanted to monitor the execution room, where 44 people were hanged between the years 1889 and 1964. We had heard this was a place where many paranormal events had occurred, been picked up on camera, and where many people had been overcome with strange feelings. Unfortunately, due to time constraints and sensitivities, we could not actively investigate this particular area. Yet, due to stories like the one we are about to share with you now, we really wanted to monitor the space. Usually in the gallows, people feel a ghostly presence. A lot of the guides talk about this. We have a, a tour guide. He was doing a tour with a group. This actually occurred during the daytime. And um, there was a, uh, a mother which had a, a child in the pram and uh, when it taken into the gallows, the child started screaming 
and shouting. And so the tour guide invited her and the flustered mother out and talked to the rest of the tour group. And then uh, when he invited the, the mother to come in with the child so he could just talk about it, but then would come in the second time, the child seemed to calm down. And then the child looked at the noose and her eyes alightened and reached out with a chubby hand and said, bye bye, bye bye. And that really freaked the mother out. Uh, the mother said that was the first time the child had spoken the words. That tour guide felt that, that maybe that child finally saw a ghost there that comforted the child. So to me, that's one of the most bizarre uh, ghost stories here in the prison. So ten, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay, guys. Jared is in this cell. This is a really weird angle. So I'm filming him on this tripod here. We are in cell ten um, of the solitary confinement sort of area here, and we're going to do an SD. So Jared's putting on his headphones now. I'm going to put on my headphones and he's going to ask me questions. These are noise cancelling so I won't be able to hear what she's asking. And I'm going to be listening to the spirit box. So, my name is Amy again. Yeah. That's great to know that you're here. So I've just put, uh, Jared. Use of poison. Use of poison? That's... The government. These are kind of interesting given where we oh. are. So this is Jared sitting in cell 10. Yes. Don't be shy to go up to him. If you can share your name with him, that would be amazing. 16. 16, okay guys, it's not actually a 16. And apparently that is because the six- Which number? Yep, the six represents the noose. Uh, we're being told about that today. So there's no six or 16 in here. Dominant. I wanna know who I'm talking to. Is that something you can share with us? You've gone quiet. Can you come back? Um, Do you like us being here talking to you? I'm starting to. You're starting to like us talk, talking to you, that's great. All over the place. I am a bit all over the place to be honest. Weird. Yeah, very weird. It's been an interesting estus because we've gotten so many words and then it went silent for a bit. Some of those words as well could be relevant Two. to the people here. Two. Throughout the place. I'm going to go down to cell two. A few numbers, which is good. I've got the gift. What's the gift? You can keep it. Oh, I don't want to look in there now. Well, there's a toilet Seven. bucket in the corner, and that's all I see. In here. I'm coming back. Why did you want me to go to two? Two. Yeah, why did you want me to go to two? Well, sort of. You know what I just realised? There is a six here. And... You didn't. There is a sixteen. You didn't. What didn't? Were you guilty didn't or innocent? Serve. Can you tell me what your crime was?
Maybe you can tell me how long you were in here for. Morris. Morris. Is that your first or last name? Morris is an interesting response here, as it is connected to a historical event that occurred in 1867. Here, three prisoners managed to escape from the Fremantle prison using a duplicate key. One of these prisoners was named George Morris. This group then went on a short crime spree before they were tracked and a shootout ensued just two days after the escape. During this event, George Morris was shot through the neck and died. It's difficult to say this response was related to this person and incident, as it's likely plenty of people with the name Morris could have passed through the jail. Yet it is still interesting, given neither Jared or myself had prior knowledge of this piece of history before conducting the Estes method. Years. How many years? So I just asked how long they were in, in here for. You're listening to me, aren't you? So it's kind of cool to get that response years after I said, how long were you in here? How are you? Guess, tell me a number. 11. 11, there's so many numbers. So many numbers. What's in 11? Those people. Can you tell me what all the numbers mean? Morgue. I can't go to the morgue tonight. This makes me wish we could get in the morgue. What is the time? It's 8 4. The time is 8 14 right now. PM. What's the time for you? Fremantle. Which is where we are. Yep. What's interesting is like this Esther session, they're actually asking me questions. That never happened. Um, okay. I'm moving the camera I'm around. I'm testing you. Okay, you're testing me? Guys. There's a really weird noise. I will. Are you doing this? There's a really weird noise coming from my camera. It's a high pitched buzzing noise. I'm losing focus, oh my God. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on the audio. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing something to my camera right now? It's coming in and out. It's like coming out of my speaker. So I hope my audio isn't screwed. I have heard that people coming in here, batteries drain, electronics screw up. People's phones go dead. People's footage gets corrupt. So I'm just hoping this is. Ooh. What? Jared? Yeah. Um, what happened? Oh, I just have like, um, you know when you're listening to this and you hear like the bits of radio every now and then and yeah. that sort of thing? I heard like a, like a weird whispery, Exhaling? It just seemed weird. You wouldn't hear that on a radio or anything. Okay, I've got something weird happening out here that is concerning me. Um, can you get out here? Now, listen very carefully, right? Are you ready? Yeah. I'm hearing a high-pitched sound. Yeah. It's like it's coming right from here. Is that abnormal? Yes. Remember they were saying cameras malfunction in here? 
battery is draining. Whenever I point this directly at me, I can hear it. Did the mic pick it up? I have no idea. I'm just worried my audio is all screwed. All right, I'm gonna cut this camera. Just keep filming. Recording again, a new session that's much shorter. Listen to this bit, I reckon it's coming out of here. In this moment, Jared and I decided to run some tests to see if this interference I was hearing could be heard on the camera's audio. The high-pitched noise can only just be heard in some of these clips. This is not something typical for my mic or camera to do and I was worried my footage may be corrupt as faults, interference and batteries draining are all supposedly common in this area of the jail. I can't say for sure this is paranormal, though it is strange given it occurred right as Jared cut the Esther session after hearing a very strange breath. Now everyone just can hear the buzzing now. I don't know if it's going to be in the footage. We can both hear it, so it's not like us going like mad or anything, you know what I mean? Um, you could definitely hear it though, Jared. Yeah, it's like that high-pitched electronic yeah. buzzing. Yeah. I don't know if it's in the footage or not, because I can't tell. <laughs> I hope that camera's not broken, because that's the new one. This is the old one. Yeah, and these cameras are freaking expensive. Maybe it's this room. I don't know. All right, now what? <laughs> so, is the mic on? Yeah. So me and Amy okay. were walking down here about to set up our next bit and as I was walking past, I swear in the corner of my eye I saw like someone standing on one of the, it was either that one or that one, I forgot how many, because I, I walked past and I registered and I was like, what? what? Yeah, we were kind of walking out really quick. So I don't know, one of these ones, that was weird. It could have just been one of those corner of your eye tricks, but... Well, okay. <sighs> Camera might be screwing up, so what we're going to do now, because things are sort of happening and the Estes was honestly interesting, we are going to try a ghost tube box session, right? Which I think is a good idea because things seem to interact with electronics here. Maybe that's, you know, a good idea. Sound manipulation, mm. heck yes, let's do it. Hi guys, so um, because we're having a weird audio problem with our camera, there's been stories of electronic equipment screwing up in Fremantle Prison and the design of the roof of this building designed with the acoustics in mind to, to make um, the prisoners not talk as much. We thought it seems only fitting to do an acoustic experiment now. So, we've got Gristu Vox by now, you all know what it is and we're trying to use it more and more in our investigations to experiment and test with it more. I'm about to hit record on one now. And even the roof, just to mention out here, has that curvature as well. It might make this hard to understand, but we'll um, we'll see how we go. I'm gonna hit record uh, now. Okay, so we're recording. So if there's anyone in this building that has been trying to communicate with us while I was in the cell, um, or has been playing with our camera, if you wanna to come to this device in my hand um, and try to touch it, you might be able to generate sounds and maybe communicate with us or at least let us know that you're here and you're present. Did you hear keys? Did it happen when this went off? I didn't hear it, but... Did you... Did, is someone trying to touch the keys? If you can touch the keys, you can get out of here. Did you hear the keys go off? Let me meet I this. don't know, I feel like I did. Really? The mic on that camera should have picked it up. It, it right did not sound it. like our keys though, it sounded oh, you no, or behind, you don't have keys on you? It sounded like no. behind you maybe, or like further up that way at least. All right, well, let's go down there, I'll, I'll keep this going again. Yeah. If that was you, can you make that noise again to let us know that you're here? You were real chirpy before. Can you show your name with us, please? Eight. Eight? Is there a cell eight here? Seven, eight? Alright, we're at cell eight. What happened in this cell? What's your name? Or 
wobbling with yourself. You did say a lot of numbers on the Estes. Is this your cell? Could that noise you have heard been? I don't know. Noise, it? I'm also doubting myself. Like, did I even hear that? Am I? Is it just? You know, in my head, I don't know. So earlier today, we got told there was no six and sixteen, right? Correct. Was that just in the yard? Because there's a six and a sixteen in here. Because you said 6 and 16 and I was like, oh, there isn't one. There actually is a cell 6 yeah. and 16. What does the number 6 or 16 mean? What relevance does it have? Were they the cells that you were in? What was, what was your crime? What did you commit? Or what were you accused of? Can you tell us your name? Do you remember our names? Yeah, can you say one of our names? Alright, I'm gonna go down to cell one and see if we get any activity around there, because that's where the condemned that's where the death row prisoners that were spending their last days would be kept. Cell one. Well that went blurry as soon as you said cell one. Is this your cell? Hate it. Hate it. You didn't enjoy the cell. What happened to the prisoners that were in here? I was told that people feel nauseous and sort of sick in this area. What can you tell us about this cell? There's all sorts of strange activity that happens around this jail. I just felt really cold and I got goosebumps and it's weird because I was just saying that I was hot in the other room. Just hearing those footsteps echo through here. I thought I just heard voices down that way too. Footsteps. Behind you. Ugh. Totally spooked him out. He refused to go back in the hut. What the was that? Right, I'm really confused and I thought I was in Division 2. I must be in Division 3. So... Oh. And he saw a figure with a big beard. Have you committed a sin? Cool. Oh. And that is where the figure was seen. So you're moving that chain. All right, Crypt Keepers. Some of the things that have happened in here have been extremely odd, but we do have a huge cell block to finish investigating tonight. So we're packing our stuff up and we're moving over to the main cell block and can't tell you how excited I am. Our walkthrough already earlier tonight, oh my gosh, like it, that place is insane. And I'm really excited to see what else we can pull out of the Fremantle prison. Now that is coming very soon in a part two episode. So if you haven't done so already, make sure that you're subscribed and have your notification bell turned on because yeah, I'm just excited. That one's gonna be really, really amazing. So I do hope though that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out. If you wanna do any more reading about the Fremantle prison or any other haunted places I've visited from around the world, head to amyscrypt.com. You guys can also follow me. I'm at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I post bonus content for my patrons and my YouTube members. So they're linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.